Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first story is titled, Steal My Cherished Toy Airplane and Get Away With It Because of Gendered BS? Enjoy the cold, searing revenge a year later. Setting, 1982 Los Angeles metro area. I was a six to seven year old girl. My grandpa bought me a cool toy airplane. It was a green dual propeller fighter plane made of metal. I took it to school one day for show and tell. I had researched the plane and who flew it during which battle, etc., and was ready for my report. I took it out at recess. This little crap Victor asked to play with it. Then he wouldn't give it back. I cried and complained to the teacher. The principal got involved and said I must be lying because girls don't play with that stuff. He refused to look at my proof, the report I wrote for the presentation. So, Victor, smirking, got to take it with him. I was not able to do my report and got a zero on the assignment. I was ahead in reading and other subjects, usually a teacher's pet. I was not used to getting poor grades or being called a liar, so the incident was devastating for that reason more than the loss of the plane. My mom came to pick me up from school and I told her what happened. She immediately parked and stormed the principal's office and tore him a new one. We showed him my notes for the report. He apologized and went to look for Victor. Well, Victor was gone by then. The principal said there was nothing the school could do to make him give it back. I was pissed. I was like, can't you give him detention until he returns it? But they were wimps about it and told me to drop it. Victor would make airplane noises and make his hand into a little airplane around me when no one else understood what he was doing. He was a little sociopath. I hated him, but was pretty powerless about it. Fast forward about six months. My mom started working 16-hour shifts on weekends only, and I would get babysat for the whole weekend, spending the night. I was at one couple's house for about a year, but they tried to baptize me against my will without telling my mom. She was pissed and fired them. She had to work the next weekend and was desperate for a babysitter. Fortunately, a friend pointed her in Consuela's direction. Consuela, let's call her C, was a 50-something-year-old grandma with a 100 kids at her house. She would watch at all hours. She had a bunch of teens and 20-something-year-old boys of her own. She was originally from Mexico, and they spoke almost exclusively Spanish. C was a hard-working woman. She also had a full-time job during the weekdays and did great with the kids. But she had a temper. Her boys were slovenly and would mope about. She would holler at them. When she hollered, we all fell in line. Or you got the business end of her wooden spoon. Sometimes she would yell at me, but I didn't understand as my Spanish was pretty rudimentary. I was taking it in school and had quite a few Spanish-speaking friends, but when C would yell, I would get stressed and not understand. I usually would just hide under the bed and stay out of sight. I realized after a while that C was mostly bark and got used to her after a while and learned how not to piss her off. She called me her good girl, and I rarely got in trouble. But I harbored some hard feelings toward C, as you can imagine. One Saturday, after about six months of staying at C's house on weekends, Mom drops me off, and who do I see in the living room but Victor? I was like, oh, hell no. Now I have to be around this little crap and try to avoid getting yelled at all weekend. Ugh. But then a plan came to me. I observed that Victor didn't speak much Spanish. He was half Mexican, but lived with a non-Spanish speaking parent after a divorce, and he was out of his element. Gone was the smirking butthead. He had big eyes full of fear. The first time C went off on one of her boys in front of Victor, he was stunned. The son got fired from his job, and when he told her, she chased him around the house with her spoon. He was twice her size and was completely cowed by her. Victor surmised that if that big guy was scared of C, then he better stay out of her way. C was a great cook, but she used the cheap cuts of meat and cut corners to feed all those kids. The next day after Victor started coming, a Sunday, she gave us sandwiches for lunch. 
As an adult, I love avocados, but as a kid, I thought they were grody. She handed us a chicken gristle with a huge slab of avocado. One simply does not refuse to eat C's food. It is a surefire way to get hollered at. Victor ate his in the other room unobserved by anyone. I took a few bites in front of C to show her I was eating it. I looked for a way to dispose of it, like give it to the dog or something like I usually did when I didn't like what I was given, but the dog was out with one of C's sons. Then the plan all came together. C's son, who was at home watching TV, got up to go to the bathroom or something. I lightning fast hucked the sandwich under the son's easy chair where it would not be seen. Then I go about my day and go back home that night. I see Victor at school all week and he went back to his smirking BS about the airplane business from before. That Saturday we were back at C's house all weekend and he's the meek little angel like last weekend. C goes into the TV room and says, what's that smell? In Spanish, I froze up. I was scared, but this was it. This was my moment. I was all innocent. P.U. What is that? She made her son get up from the easy chair and lift it to find a nasty, moldy sandwich. It was hot outside and C didn't have air conditioning, so that sandwich was a fetid, molded mess. C whirls around with a cracked glare and looks around at us kids. Everyone scatters but me. I said innocently, Tia, I saw Victor in that room with his sandwich last week. Maybe he dropped it on accident with sweet good girl eyes. She laser focuses on Victor who runs for his life. Victor, get back here. He climbs a tree and she can't get to him. He spent some time in the tree and wouldn't come down. She went inside to call his parent to come get him. I made eye contact with Victor and made airplane noises and smiled. In that moment, he knew I had orchestrated the whole thing. I never saw him at C's house again. I would see him at school, and he never messed with me again. Epilogue, Inception Revenge. When C came back into the backyard to tell Victor his parent was coming, a dead mouse got flipped into her shoe. Flip-flops. She was mortally afraid of rodents. I watched fascinated likely smiling evilly, waiting for her to notice. She noticed my gaze, looked down, and saw the mouse in her shoe. She screamed and hollered. Later that day, I caught her looking at me, scrutinizing me. I think she understood the depths of my planful evil in that moment. The next story is titled, HOA Karen Calls 911 on Us for Using Public Pool. I Get Her Arrested for Tax Evasion. People are different all over the world. In every single place, even the smallest village has that annoying neighbor. In my neighborhood, we have a Karen, who is one of the worst neighbors you could have asked for. She is the richest in the neighborhood because she won half of it from the lottery, and the other half comes from her late husband. She always makes sure to remind us how rich and amazing she is. She does all kinds of things to annoy and upset everyone on a daily basis. There is an indeterminate number of times that she called the police on the neighbors, never with a good reason. The neighbors told us multiple stories. One time she called the police on an old woman that lives next door to her because she was annoyed that the old woman's children were visiting too often. She also told everyone in the neighborhood that she is allergic to pollen and that no one should plant flowers. I was absolutely stunned because I'm also allergic to pollen and I can't even imagine saying that to my neighbors. She accused all the neighbors of different crimes. She accused a man of being a drug dealer claiming that she had bought drugs from him and that she was forced. The police came and searched the man's house, but they didn't find anything. She called the police on another neighbor when he bought a new car claiming that the neighbors stole that car from her. She even accused a neighbor of sexual assault, but every single one of these accusations were false. But wait, her stupidity doesn't stop there. She was caught multiple times sneaking into people's yards, looking at them through their windows, and taking photos of them. She was also caught taking pictures of people at the public pool, almost daily. When anyone confronted her, she always said, I'm in public, I can photograph whatever I want. 
She always assumed that she could do anything she wanted just because she was rich. And she kind of did because no one wanted to argue with such a stupid person. She always managed to get out of every situation just because she was a white, rich woman. Everyone in the neighborhood had at least one altercation with her because she targeted everyone. She wanted to prove that she can do whatever she wanted. The story dynamic changed when my family and I moved into the neighborhood. We are a middle-class family like most of the people in the neighborhood, but in the eyes of the rich woman, we look like the poorest people ever. She hated poor people in general, but mostly the ones that were living in the same neighborhood as hers. Our family consisted of my mother, my father, and my brother and me. I was 16 years old at the time of the story, and my brother was 10 years old. One day she came to our house and knocked on the door aggressively. My mother opened the door. Hello, can I help you? My mother asked. Yes, you could help me by moving somewhere else. You know, I hate poor people. And you all seem very annoying, she replied. I'm sorry, but I can't help you with that, my mom replied while closing the door. She went home angry, and you could see in her eyes that she was thinking of how she could make our lives a living hell too. One day, my brother and I were going to the pool. She was sitting on her porch, apparently selling lemonade. I decided to be the grown person and buy from her. We entered her yard and looked around. Two cups, she asked. Yes, thank you, I replied. It's cool. What are you doing here? I added. The lemonade stands, she asked. Yes, it's awesome. Do you do it every year, I asked. Yes, every summer with lemonade and all year with other drinks, she replied, preparing our lemonade. Oh, a small business. I love it. Are the taxes big for something like this, I asked. I don't pay taxes for it. It's just a stand of drinks, she replied. You ask too many questions, boy, she added. I didn't reply as I felt that this information was good, and I could use it any time needed. We paid for the lemonade and went to the pool. We noticed that she walked behind us until we arrived at the pool. She then took a seat somewhere close to us. She took her camera out and started taking pictures of my brother as he was swimming in the pool. Every time she saw that I was looking towards her, she pretended to do something else. I didn't know the purpose of what she was doing was, but I had to stop her. What are you doing, you creep? I shouted. Photos at the pool. Am I not allowed to? She asked. You were taking pictures of my brother, I replied, screaming. Give me the camera, I added. No, get away from me, she shouted. I grabbed the camera from her hand and started looking through the photos. I was right. She was taking photos of my brother. I never wanted to be a bully because I knew how bullying felt, but I had to do it. I showed everyone the photos, and we all laughed. I tried to make her feel bad and realize the severity of the problem. As an answer to out-bully, she called the police on us, telling them there were some thieves, some bad kids, that trespassed and came to the pool. She told the police that the thieves were harassing her, making her and everyone at the pool feel unsafe. The police came and discussed with everyone at the pool. I told the police about how she was taking pictures of my brother, and everyone at the pool backed me up. The police quickly understood how the situation really was. The situation was cleared up, and the police gave her a warning for calling the police for no reason. She got really angry, and she left the pool in a rush. But I was still angry, and I wanted revenge. She had to pay for her behavior, and I was going to make her pay. I went to the police and told them about her little business. The police took statements from the other neighbors who confirmed that she was selling drinks all year long. Apparently, she was doing it for almost two years now and never paid her taxes. The police took her stand and all her other utensils and arrested her for tax evasion. Everything made me and the other neighbors happy. The last story is titled, Divorce Revenge, Husband's Story. With his first wife, he bought a house five years before they ever met. When they married, she started cheating on him shortly after. He didn't know. Dude, she was cheating on him with his best friend. Her and the boyfriend came up with an idea to get husband to put her name on the title and refinance the house. This was back during the last housing boom. She ended up spending the money on her and her boyfriend. During this time is when he found out they were together. He kicked her out and started divorce proceedings. She had legal connections, so basically took him to the cleaners. In the decree, stated he had to refinance 
and get her name off the house. By that time, the housing market had crashed bad, and he was not able to refinance, even after trying several times. As years go by, and he had moved out of state, but kept the house as a rental since he couldn't do much with it. Her and same boyfriend got married and wanted to buy a house, so she wants her name off the old house. She takes ex-hubby to court for in contempt of divorce decree, since he wasn't able to get her name off the house. Went to court to plead his case with proof of trying to refinance multiple times. Her connected parents knew the judge that ruled he was in contempt, had to pay all associated fees, pay her off the house with all lawyer fees, and spend five days in jail. Funny thing is, after he was released, he was in a perfect position to file Chapter 13 bankruptcy and include said house, refinance loan, and all lawyer fees in bankruptcy. Who do you think the banks and lawyers went after for the money then? Stupid idiot. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.